The following are simply just theories and I am in no way claiming that they are factual. So basically what I'm saying is, miss me with that lawsuit. So a couple weeks ago, I was in Walmart looking for a new desk, and I found one that I actually kind of liked for the price of about $45 to $50. But before I bought it, Allison wanted to make sure that they didn't have any better deals going on at Target. So she pulled out her phone and went on the app. And we ended up finding one on the app that was actually a much better quality for virtually the same price, about $50. So we left Walmart and headed for Target, and we tracked down that same exact desk, except in store, the desk was $70. No, I didn't think too much of it at the time. And honestly, I just assumed that it was an issue with the app. It was just a minor glitch, no big deal. And I actually just ended up going back to Walmart and buying the original desk that I was looking at. But what I thought to be just a simple little mistake in the app may have actually been an attempt to lure me in to shopping at Target. Let me explain. So the theory is that the Target app actually varies its prices depending on whether you're inside a Target or outside a Target. So the prices will actually appear lower on the app when you're not in the store, but once you you step foot in the store, the app automatically changes the prices and makes them more expensive than they were outside of the store. And honestly, if you made the trip out there specifically to get that item and you really had your heart set on getting it, you're probably going to buy it anyway, despite the cost being more than you originally thought. Now, this is a theory that I ended up actually finding on Reddit, and it really reminded me of my experience when I was shopping for the desk. And other people had ended up actually commenting on this thread in Reddit, saying that they have had prices jump as high as $30 once they got inside the store. Now, obviously, if true, this would be a big scam. This would be a really big deal. But at the end of the day, a conspiracy theory is all that it was. Or at least... I thought. The parking lot yep. that gives you a sale price, mm -hmm. and as soon as you walk through that door, the sale goes away. Yep. Our list of 10 items was a total of $262 cheaper in the parking lot. And if you pay close attention to the $351.99 there on the app, you'll see, boom, like a magic trick. It changes hundreds of feet away from the store. That's right, it hit the mainstream media, and it was proven that this theory wasn't just a theory, it was entirely legit. So legit that Target actually had to update its app and totally remove its process of location-based pricing. So that's right, the Target app had been scamming us all along. But the good news is, now we don't have to worry about it because the app is updated and everything is back to the way that it should be. Or is it? I think we should go to Target and test out the app's new update to see if this is actually still going on or if they have finally fixed the issue. Let's go find out. Okay, so you don't know the theory yet. No. But the theory basically is that Target's app actually manipulates the prices of their items based on whether you're in the store or not in the store. So because we're so far away from Target now, they'll show some of the items being on sale. And so you see, oh, that's a pretty nice sale. Let's go in and buy this. And then you get in the store. And as soon as you enter that store, the sale's gone. They literally got caught doing this. So they updated the app. And they said, okay, they're done doing that, right? Let's see if they're really still doing it. So what I'm gonna do is take like five or 10 random items on the app and see if the price changes when we go into the store. I'll take some screenshots so we have proof. That's the sale price. And supposedly with this theory, that just goes away and it goes right to the regular price as soon as we walk in. All right, let's find out. I'm nervous. Can you tell me why we're in the underwear aisle? I can't tell you how we ended up here, but this is where we're gonna film this next little bit. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's do it. All right, so far, so good. The TVs all check out. Let's check the chips. They're on sale too. Wait, go back. So far, everything is checking out. All right, so finally there's the desks. All right, so. Literally everything checks out. Even the desks? Even the desks. All three. All three categories checked out. So it seems like the Target app is no longer switching their prices. So that's the end of the story. Case closed. So this is the weirdest thing ever. There are layers to this thing. This reaches further than just Target. So I'm on that Reddit thread that 
I initially discovered this theory on. All the comments on this on this um, thread are literally saying Best Buy did the same thing. Like Best Buy does this too. Walmart does this too. And they're naming all these other retail stores that apparently do the same exact thing. So I'm like, this is the craziest thing ever. Like, how are these companies just getting away with it? And then I found this website. Best Buy was literally sued for doing something just like this earlier. And this is the craziest thing ever. Listen to what they did. It says Best Buy has admitted to maintaining two versions of its website with different prices. One is the public website accessible on the internet by anyone. The other site, which is essentially a replica of the public site, could only be accessed inside of Best Buy stores. Both sites were nearly identical, except for one important difference. The in-store site displayed the higher prices for all the items, while the regular website had lower prices. It makes them more expensive than they were outside of the store. So if you came in and was like, oh, I saw this camera was $30, but here it's advertised for $40, They'd, be, they'd pull up the website and be like, yeah, they, no, it's they 40. They would literally like call you an idiot. Like they, they would be like, no, our website here shows that it's actually $40 and you're but wrong. But what happens when you go home and look again and it's 30? You'll notice it, but this is back in 2007. So what are you gonna do? Like, I, I don't think smartphones even had cameras. Like, are you gonna bring your whole computer in? This was the an original scam. And this is eerily similar to what the Target app is doing, except the Target app is doing it in a more modernized way, basically. That's, that's the only difference here, really. And now apparently Walmart's app does the same thing. I mean, I haven't looked into that, so I can't speak on that, but it's just crazy. It makes me like literally question everything. Be careful. Just, just be careful with these websites and these apps. When you use store apps like Target, you expect to get the best deals. There are countless theories out there that claim that big retail stores are actually tracking you and spying on you while you're shopping in their stores. How do they do this? Well, the claims vary. Some people believe these stores actually hide little audio recorders all throughout the store. And I'm here today to talk to you guys about the world's smallest audio recorder so they can hear what you're saying about certain products and gain feedback in that sort of way. Others believe that the security cameras that are littered all throughout these big retail stores aren't really just for security purposes. They're actually there to track and study our shopping habits and to see how we move throughout the store and to see what items we react with and we engage with the most. Now you might be wondering, well, why would a big retail store even wanna do this? Why would they care? Well, think about how valuable that information could be to them. I mean, wouldn't you think that a big store would wanna know what people are saying about certain products? And wouldn't they really wanna fully understand each of our shopping habits? Now, Target is a store that is specifically mentioned in a lot of these tracking and spying conspiracy theories, but they've also come under fire for tracking us using a different method. And by using something that many of us can't live without Wi-Fi. So the theory goes when you log into Target's Wi-Fi, they actually track your cell phone and track your movements all throughout the store to understand our shopping patterns. And I guess it's not the biggest deal, but this is never really disclosed to any of us. And I don't know, something about it just leaves like a, a bad taste in my mouth. Okay, now some of you might be saying, okay, big deal. Just turn off the Wi-Fi. Okay, lit. I shouldn't say that. Well, what if you have horrible cell service and your cell service is so bad that the only way you can really use your phone is to log into this Wi-Fi? I mean, just, just think about it for a minute. Haven't you walked into a big retail store and immediately lost cell service? Like I'm talking like straight five bars, down to one or even zero as soon as you step foot in that store. Well, this might not entirely be an accident. And this is part of the theory too. The theory is that Target, as well as other big retail stores, will actually jam your cell service on purpose to force you to log into their Wi-Fi. And that's when this theory becomes slightly incriminating. Because as some of you might know, jammers are illegal in the United States. So legally, a retailer could not be using them. But could they be breaking the law? You never know. So obviously I can't go into Target and test to see if they are tracking my every movement, but what I can do is test to see how my cell service changes when I step foot into Target to see if Target might actually be jamming our cell phone signals. That is so weird. Dude. Oh, what? Down to one. I literally had full service outside, full bars, and I swear it'll go back right as we go outside. Went from full to literally one bar. Check yours, what, what is your service at? I'm at two. I was at one a second ago. Come on, come on. Look Full at, bars look at where the we are. second. 
We walk out the door. Like we're literally at the doors and full bars. Oh, whoa, down to one. 10 to one, we're gonna walk out and see what happens to the bars. We're at one right now. And I wanna show you guys what happens as soon as we walk out. Immediately. That is the weirdest thing ever. It's a wrap, that's a wrap. So the fact that I lost cell service like that does fit in with this theory, but there are also other explanations for this. Like for example, the metal framing of the building or the thick concrete walls and even the high amount of people using the cell service in one confined area. So this isn't like a closed case by any means, but it definitely makes for an interesting theory. So for those of you who don't know, skinny mirrors are basically mirrors that are slightly warped, just enough to give you the appearance of being a lot skinnier. Well, a popular theory, thanks to Shane Dawson and Mickey Hayes, basically claims that Target uses these skinny mirrors in their dressing room. And they do this so that when you try on their clothes, you look extra skinny and you look extra good and you feel great. So great that you decide to just buy the clothes because you look so skinny in them. Only to find out when you take them home and try them on in front of your own mirror, oh. I'm still ugly. And people believe that this is something that's not just going on in Target, but virtually all big retail stores. Now, according to the actual Skinny Mirrors website, retailers will sell on average up to 18% more clothes compared to normal mirrors. All right, so what we're gonna do for this test is go and take a mirror picture in Target, and also take a mirror picture in another retail store to compare the two, and then finally come home to my own mirror, see if I look any skinnier in any of these pictures. Let's find out. So when I was a young and growing boy, I think I was probably like 12 or 13 years old at the time, and I literally could never find jeans that fit me properly. Like, they all looked weird on me. So one day, my mom takes me to Kohl's, and she, she gives me a bunch of different sizes to try on, and she's like, here, try all of these on, and let's find a pair that really finally fits you. I find one that I just look, I look beautiful in it. Like, straight up, I look beautiful. And man, I'm looking at myself in this mirror, and I'm like, damn, I might actually talk to a woman now. Didn't happen. It never happened. No, I never did. And the next day, it's time for school. So I'm like, all right, let me try on these nice. They were black jeans, too. The, oh, the original pair was black, and they just looked so silky. So I'm like, all right, let me put these black jeans on. Put them on. I look in the mirror. I literally look like, like a pile of human shit. Why did I look so good in Kohl's? But when I got home, I looked terrible. Maybe they were using skinny mirrors back in the day. You never know. Now let me stab your face out. I always thought that was like voodoo. I thought that was for voodoo purposes, so I never touched it. Do you feel skinny? I don't feel particularly skinny here. You shouldn't. Oh, is that how you tell? No, I, I just saw a thing, like, if your finger, like, looks like it's actually touching the other side, then it's like a, a two-way mirror. We're not looking for two, we're looking for skinny mirrors. I wanted to see if it worked the same way. There is, like, a weird reflection, though. Right. It's like a double reflection. Skinny mirrors are basically mirrors that are slightly warped. Dude, this is my first time ever in a Target changing room. Really? Well, let's do this first. Oh yeah, there's like major distortion. What the hell? Do you feel skinnier? I don't know, I definitely feel skinnier. All right, it's time to check the home mirror out. Are you, s what is this? What is this? What? what are you wearing? Chewbacca onesie. Uh, we're not done with the video. Who cares? Here it is. Look at that studly. All right, we have to do the finger test. Let's see if there's any type of distortion in this mirror. Cause I like, I don't know. I don't know if that's a thing in most mirrors or not. I don't see anything. There is no distortion whatsoever. There's nothing there. Straight up. That is so weird. Let's check another mirror. Let's go. Okay. That is definite distortion. 100%. So do we think it's like overhead lighting? Like Maybe it's it? it's something to do with either the lighting or the curvature of the mirror, but no matter what, I think we can debunk that. That does not prove that they are skinny mirrors. All right, so that might be debunked, but what we have to do now is compare the three photos of the three locations side by side so we can really know once and for all if they are using skinny mirrors or not. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the three different pictures from the three locations. All right, so our first stop 
This is cold. Cool. I look I look really skinny. I yeah. do look really skinny. I'm not that skinny in real life. There's your no arms way. look kind of skinny too. Like that's not what your arms look like. I'm pretty jacked, so like that's that's an uncharacteristic trait. What is that? What, why are you shaking your head? Oh shit! But I will say about Coles, I did not feel skinny looking in the mirror at Coles. Do you feel skinny? Not really. The lighting was not very good in the dressing room. That could be a reason why I didn't feel extra skinny, but looking at this picture, I definitely do look skinny. All right, now let's look at Target. Here we go. You definitely look bigger in the Target. And like, I look bigger. I do, right? And it's not like your shirt's pulled in anymore. No. Like, it's the same exact shirt. But that's weird, because that's the one that I felt the skinniest looking in. I don't know. I definitely feel skinnier. And again, I feel like that is a pointer to the lighting. So bright. You're right. It is so bright. Because each individual dressing room had its own light. And it's facing you rather than being above you. So like you have that light facing you. It's like a professional light almost. All right. And then finally, let's compare that to this. Somehow that's like the medium picture. Right? Okay. So Kohl's made you look the skinniest. This one's like in the middle. Mm. Target made you and look the fattest. Target made me look the biggest, but I felt the skinniest looking in the mirror. After doing this and after doing all the research on skinny mirrors, I don't think either of the companies use skinny mirrors. And I think really all it comes down to is lighting. I really think that is the ticket to, to making you look skinnier, making you feel skinnier. I mean, everyone knows this, like proper lighting makes you feel better about okay. yourself. It makes you feel skinnier. So skinny mirrors, I don't think so. But that's the thing about conspiracy theories. The answers you find are rarely ever what you expect. This was the original scam. Some theories lead you straight to a dead end. That is definite distortion. 100%. But then there are those that become much more than just theories. They literally got caught doing this. While others leave you with more questions than answers. Come on, look Full at, bars look at where the we are. second we walk out the door. But the answers are always out there somewhere. You just have to find them.